Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I'm going to speed paint these 20 game, old Games Workshop on Go uh, for use in Warlords of Erewhon. Scruffy Crow! Ah! Alright, so I've been grabbing these guys up when I've seen them on eBay and I finally got enough to produce a couple of good units here. I really like these sculpts, they are very characterful and are going to work really well as as lesser beast men uh, in the Warlords of Air One list. Paint job wise, they're gonna be fairly simple to paint up, I think. Um, it's mostly just gonna be my standard flesh recipe, uh, hence the name of the video. So, so far, these guys have had shields added. These are from EM4, worked out pretty cheap. I'm not 100% happy with them. They're a bit simple for my liking, but they're gonna have to do. Uh, and then I've undercoated them black and then given them a very light dusting gray just more or less so I can see the, the details. Uh, they're on 30 mil round bases because that's what the rest of my Warlords of Aeron Beastman army is on. And the painting plan, I said nice and simple, is going to be mostly my flesh tone all over, hence the name of the video. Uh, and then sort of wood on the spears and the backs of the shields, black shields, black fur, and probably leather loincloths. But the bulk of this video is going to be how I do my nice, quick, simple flesh recipe that I use on everything. So we're gonna start off with this big fluffy brush. This is an old makeup brush. Uh, though I do accent, although I do occasionally buy these new from Primark for about a pound, uh, and they're great for this. I'm gonna start out with one of my favorite paints. Uh, this is Idrin Flesh, and I use this for the base of wood and flesh, uh, so it gets a lot of use. I'm gonna go straight out of the pot, using my nice big brush, and get a bit of paint on there. Wipe about half of it off. And this should give me nice thin coats all over the model, no streaks. Rather than streaking, if it's gonna use this method, it ends up being sort of transparent. But actually the Idrin Flesh has got quite good coverage. And outside of airbrushing, I don't know any way to get an undercoat down that quickly uh, on a model. And as I said, this isn't just gonna go on the flesh. Also the spears are gonna get a coat of this uh, and the shields can be the base coat use for those as well. Okay, so next up is going to be some Midland Flesh. Now for something like this where I've got a lot of guys to paint, um, for me it's I'm either going to speed paint them or they're probably not going to get done. And I'll just sit and paint it forever which is no good. So the way I would normally do this step is I would uh, just take some a normal brush and I would go through and I basically pick out 80 plus percent of the skin areas in this, kind of doing a bit of an overbrush, a very heavy highlight. So if guys like these, I probably would spend the time sort of picking out your yeah, nose and cheeks and then muscles. I'd work my way from the highest point downwards. Um, and then I'd do a bit of overbrushing to sort of catch the bits in between. And I'd end up with a fairly sort of covered model, uh, but I would have done it quite carefully. That's not going to work if I do that, if I spend as much time as I was on a single character uh, doing this on Tony Guys, I will go crazy. So I've been doing a couple of experiments. This guy was just done more or less like that, but quick. Uh, and this guy was done uh, even quicker, just using a much bigger brush. So that's what we're going to do. This is definitely not something I call a dry brush, but I'm just trying to get a nice even layer of the middle and flesh while still leaving some of the nice of the brown in the gaps. That means with some nice fast brush strokes, I can get a nice even coat. Uh, what I might do is I might go over these guys twice. So I might do this now, do a run over them. Um, Cause I've got this quite thin and then just give them another one just to even that out. Uh, but that means I can do each of these in like less than a minute on this stage. Um, so I'll put some Netflix on and I'll get on with that. Okay, so these guys are looking substantially more flesh coloured. It's now time for the Reitland Flesh Shade. This will uh, help tie the first two colours together. It'll also bring in a lot more subtle highlights uh, than I'm capable of doing, or low lights anyway. Um, so fairly big brush, and we're just whacking this on, making sure it doesn't pull anywhere. And we're just going to bring out all that musculature 
uh, fingers and faces and everything uh, and blend the darkest sections in a little bit. I think this is a pretty key step because I think, well, the application of instant talent always is. But I also think this adds a lot of warmth uh, and a little bit more complexity to my scheme uh, than if I just stuck to the flesh colours. I think this, what, this layer is what makes them look living. Okay, so that's on my own goes with the wash on. Um, so they look like I've had a bit of a tan, if anything. So I just need to leave that to dry for a little while and then we'll do the next step. And that is uh, Midland Flesh again. Uh, so we're taking them from here to here. So I've got my wet palette out and I'm getting the paint fairly thin. And I'm just going to be doing about 50% maybe coverage on here. So just the most raised parts, got this little belly in. And somewhere like here, I start off with almost dots on the most raised muscles. And I slowly sort of drag them around a bit Use some slightly thinner paint, sort of blend those in. But yeah, that's basically what we're going for. Leaving plenty of that previous layer visible. And obviously the more layers you can see at once, you can see right down to that original brown, the more striking uh, it looks. I'm actually finding the faces on these guys fairly tricky actually. And there's quite a lot of variation between these little monkey faces and some of the more human ones. Okay, so that's that highlighting done and I'm fairly happy with it. Uh, you can see all the sort of individual muscles now, uh, but the models don't really pop. So the last layer for the skin is gonna be some of this flayed one flesh. Let's find a space on my palette. Because somehow this is dried like gel in here almost. It's horrible. Now I want to be really sparing with this. Because it's quite harsh. So really only we're going to sort of concentrate on eyebrows and noses. And if we've got like a muscle like this sort of little bicep bit here or whatever the back bicep's called. We're just going to do the top of that muscle. And I'm also going to do knuckles with this. And I'm going to look at each individual knuckle, really bring them out. And so we've got something like that, which I think is looking pretty cool. So this is probably going to work out a lot quicker than the last stage, uh, but it is a lot more detailed and in depth. All right, so now I'm happy with the skin tones. It's time to finish up the rest of the model. I won't go through that too deeply. I'm going to print the fronts of the shields uh, black. I'm going to use a bit of Zandri dust um, to sort of mix the wood grains on the spears and sort of pick it, pull out the wood grain on the backs of the shields. Uh, I can't remember how I did the fur um, on my other beastmen, so I'll go and find one of them and I'll recreate that. Um, same with the loin cloths. I might just do them a leather, a dark leather. Uh, and I'll do the spear haft something interesting, maybe just a little bit of red to tighten with some of the other bits of my army. Oh, and I'll also be using, the, as I said, the black on the fronts of the shields. But I'll also go and do all our eye cavities in black so I can do some eyes in a bit. But as I said, I'm not going to go through that too closely because that is my skin tone complete. Uh, and that's how I do pretty much any human sort of skin tones, really. Uh, I vary sometimes the amounts and layers if I want lighter or darker ones. Um, for instance, this model, I wanted everything just that little bit darker. Um, so I put the wash on, on top of the first layer rather than in the second layer. And then I sort of slowly highlighted up from that. Uh, so I'm about a whole highlight behind. And that's given a, a slightly darker uh, skin tone. Okay, I popped out to the garage and dug out one of my beastmen. I love how much bigger these guys are than the little ungoes. I'm kind of looking in depth about how I painted these guys. Um, and it looks like it is just black with a dry brush of brown. Uh, just to make it slightly off black. Um, 
and we've done the purple, which I knew I'd done on a few guys. And this is beaten purple by P3, um, which has just been highlighted with a bit of white or something. So I've been replicating that on some of these ungors, and I'm pretty happy with the way that's starting to come out. Uh, these guys have got some pretty cool little fur patterns. All right, we're really getting somewhere with these guys now. Uh, basically, all the colours are blocked out. I've got purple up here and some leather, and I've done the horns. Uh, I still need to do the teeth, uh, a separate colour, but yeah, we're pretty much there. Uh, so now for the, one of the most important colours, some Agrax Earthshade. So I'll be using this on the spears uh, to bring the colour of those correctly, uh, bring out any wood grain we've got on the backs here, uh, and the grain of the leather on the tops there. I'll also use it on the purple a little bit, just to make a bit of contrast between the skin and where the purple starts a little bit better. Uh, and I might even use it a little bit on the faces, uh, just to make any darker creases that I want. Not so much on this guy, but there's a couple of others uh, where I might use it, and also on the horns. So this is uh, quite a big step. And that's these guys all finished up. Let's get to have you some washes on the spear, so we've got some bit of texture on the wood there. Instead of leaving the fur just black, uh, I actually gave it a bit of a dry brush with some Bugman's Glow to give it a bit of depth. I think that's come out quite nicely, still, while still being mostly black. They've all got little eyes painted in. I've made put a little... Uh, I've kind of brought out their teeth a little bit. Uh, some of them have some little fangs. And I'm pretty happy with the way they've come out. The bases will get a, a layer of Italian herbs. and Probably some tufts and stuff as well at some point. Um, but that's all packed away for the time being. Um, but I'm pretty happy with the way these guys came out. Especially as I did paint 20 in one go. I've still got the banner to create as well. Uh, I'll do that using the uh, foil that I normally use, which I did a video on for my dwarves. So it'll be the same way. I'll just cut two little strip banners, do some cool runes or something on those. The only other thing I might do uh, plus on these guys is some of the shields. Currently there's a few of them with just plain blank shields, uh, which maybe just a bit of grey highlighting. Um, and I've thought about doing some designs, so I did some experiments. We've got a bit of a chaos star there done in a couple of whites. Um, and I tried a ram's skull, uh, but I didn't finish highlighting that one. I think I need to go find a bit more reference material before I finish that one off. Uh, so a few of the shields might get some more designs, but my full-size gauze don't have any patterns on their shields either, because I'm still trying to wait for a bit of inspiration, uh, maybe to make the army match together a bit better. But all in all, I'm happy with the way these guys came out. Uh, they're wonderful old minis, uh, absolute joy to paint. But at the same time, I didn't want to do the most in-depth job ever, because otherwise I'd be here all... Because otherwise I'd have never finished painting them. And now these guys are painted. I can start on the hand weapon unit. And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, maybe subscribe for more. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.